Friends, biophiliacs, Rob Nelson here. We're gonna to talk today about daffodils. Now I did a feature on daffodils on Stone Age Man, which I think is probably the most entertaining version of how to learn about daffodils. But this is more of an uncut, raw discussion about all the things that I couldn't put in the main video and maybe just elaborate a little bit more on them. Some of you, especially who are into plants, might actually find this just as interesting, if not a little bit more, because I'm just talking you through it as if it was a podcast, but I got the daffodils here too, so we're just gonna walk through it. Now, the first thing that I think is interesting about these daffodils is how cool, and mm, I gotta stick it in here, how cool their flowers are. Now I tried to show this, but I just want to talk it through a little bit more. A normal flower is going to have a few different whorls that develop as the flower forms. And some of those develop into these showy petal things, and some of them into sepals, which are often just little green appendages here on the outside. This is just the easiest way I can do to explain it to most people. But um, in a daffodil, and a lot of the lily um, types will have sepals on the outside essentially that look showy and look more like uh, petals and that's what we have here so technically they're called tepals if you're looking in the literature but you know this is what most people would call petals but they would be the sepal version and then this is the corolla so it's the trumpet shaped petals that are all fused together and the only reason I mentioned that in the video is I think it's kind of neat to start looking at flowers in a new light and figure out like, oh, well, how is this flower related to that other one and how is it unique? And that's kind of why we have it like this. So, um, let me see. Uh, I have a whole row here of daffodils that I've planted and there's some variations within them. I don't have all of the variations, so I probably shouldn't just go into explaining all, all of the different types, but Mostly here, I just want to show you that uh, a lily, like these daffodils, will have a, a bulb at the bottom, and then they will have basal leaves that grow up, much like a grass, because they're monocots. And then out of the top here, you have a stem that turns into the flower. And almost always, you're just going to have, on, on these daffodils, just one flower at the end of a stalk but they have varieties where there are multiple ones there's a little inflorescence at the top so that's kind of cool but i don't have any of those with me now most daffodils are also going to be some version of yellow white or orange <laughs> you can see behind me i have all of the yellow ones and then this one is mostly white now i've read reports that daffodils stink that they smell like cat urine but I did a survey with the kids and we could not find any of them that smelled like cat urine. In fact, they all smelled really good. Somewhere between a gardenia, probably a honeysuckle, and some sort of perfume type smell. And they all smelled different. So when we went down the row, especially when we grabbed different varieties, they all had a different flavor to them. And I think that's so cool. Now, here's some of the interesting toxic properties. If you look at the literature, there's over... Well, about 20 different toxic compounds that people have identified in daffodils. But lycorine is the most common one. Lycorine is a toxin that causes nausea, diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, it can be really bad for your gastrointestinal system. And then, then that can lead to further complications like heart issues, uh, liver issues. Th this is how a lot of toxins work, to be honest. So it's not so important to learn exactly what's happening, but just to know that there is a toxin in these things that will prevent you from wanting to eat it. That's why things like deer don't eat it. You're, if you have a dog that accidentally eats it, that's really bad. It's not really supposed to. It doesn't taste that great. So there's nothing in the plane that would encourage you to eat it. Uh, most of the time, your dog or cat will be okay, but you're gonna wanna take it to the emergency room and they will often encourage it to start vomiting. And that is the best case scenario. Occasionally dogs and cats have died. Now I did a little bit of research because I wanted to point to here's cases where people have died from eating daffodils and I couldn't really find a lot of cases. In fact, I couldn't find any credible source that talked about death from daffodil today. There were a lot of cases though where people mistook the bulb and, and uh, I don't really have a bulb to show you here. 
Actually, there's one over here. I can pull this one up. They, they mistook this part. Oh, no, can't pull that one up. I buried it again. Uh, they mistook the bulb for an onion. I mean, we've all seen daffodil bulbs. That's, that's the daffodil bulb. So in the fall, right before you plant them, you have them in a big bag. And then you're gonna take that bag of daffodils and plant them in the ground. And if you leave that in the pantry right next to where the onions are, and you don't really know what onions look like versus daffodils, you might think, oh, those are just onions. Because they do have a similar look, you know? Like if you've ever seen an onion growing, they come out, they have basal leaves, they look very similar. They're, they're monocots just like this. Uh, so there's a similar look. They don't smell like onions though, so that's a good indicator. Just smell your onion, make sure it smells like an onion. If you're cutting it up and it doesn't smell like an onion, maybe don't eat it. <laughs> but they would put these in stews and then the whole family would get sick. But nobody has ever died. Uh, there were also cases of people eating them to try to get sick so they could miss uh, something like a school project or whatnot. <sighs> I live under the flight path, so you're gonna get a lot of this. Um, but I think that's good that it's not deadly toxic. If it was deadly toxic, I wouldn't want to have around with the kids. I think the only thing that was really worrying for me was when I ate it during the video, which again, check out the link there. There was not a bad taste to these daffodils. Oftentimes, when you have alkaloids in these plants, there'll be a bitter taste and it's just like, oh, it's so gross. It's especially berries, you know, you put a bad berry in your mouth and it has toxic compounds, you're gonna spit it out. It would be really bad if that berry was yummy and it tasted okay. Well, well with these, it actually tasted a bit like orchids. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried orchids, but you can eat the flower to all orchids. And it tasted like that. No compound that I had in these that was burning my throat. And that's what the other toxic compound, the calcium oxalates, do. Now oxalates are what cause, if you have high oxalates in your diet, that will cause kidney stones often. So rhubarb and uh, what are some of the other things high in oxalates? <laughs> my mind is not, not functioning right at the moment. But those oxalates will crystallize and form kidney stones. But they also form compounds in plants that will irritate the skin and the throat. So if you ever eat things that have calcium oxalate in it, it will burn and cause an irritation. I did not see that when I was eating these, although I was very careful not to swallow them. So maybe if I swallowed it, I would have found that. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I also wanted to note that there is a lot of stuff about replanting that I learned that I didn't put in the video. So I thought I would discuss that here. Uh, all of these have yet, there's, there's a differentiation in, in bloom times. If you can see here, we have these all who, who have yet to bloom, but almost all my daffodils have already bloomed and a bunch of them over there have left. I have a wild version over here, let me show you that has been in the yard for over a decade. I don't know who planted it, it was here when I got to it. Um, but these sent up a few stalks, they're now in the shade, and they're going to slowly turn yellow and die. And there are different people who talk about when you should replant daffodils. The ideal time would be after these have died, all the leaves have gone away, then you can dig them up and you have all, the, all these tubers that have dried out because they do that over the summer and then distribute them in the fall. But the problem is sometimes you don't know where those daffodils are. Like I always forget where my daffodils are by the time it, I should be digging them up to transplant them. So without putting a stake in it, what am I gonna do? So there, it seems to be a lot of people who at this point will then dig them up after they've flowered and before they're dead, well, they'll dig these up and replant them. So they'll divide the bulbs and that seems to be a good method. So I'm gonna try that this year with mine and get them into some more sun, um, distribute this stock a little bit more. Maybe they'll bloom more in the future. Um, okay, so that was just a short little discussion of some of the things that I talked about in the main video on daffodils. If you're if you're into daffodils and you have a channel that talks about it, let me know down in the comments. <sighs> I just wanted to take a time to do a short on this channel, even though I already did one on the other channel just because there were some things I didn't get to talk about. Okay. <sighs> I'll probably do more on this channel in the future, but for now, they'll just be short behind the scenes things. Thanks everybody for tuning in. 
and I'll see you in the next one.